Step up your home decor game at HomeSense, the newest member of the home goods family. Every day you'll find game-changing savings on rugs, lamps and chandeliers, furniture, and more for inside and outside your home. Make your backyard the envy of the neighborhood. HomeSense is a new shopping adventure on every visit. New finds arrive all the time, so it's never the same store twice. For brands you love at prices that make sense, take a virtual tour and find a store near you at homesense.com. Earn Your Leisure is now part of the Black Effect Network and iHeartRadio. I'm Rashad Bilal. And I am Troy Millings, and we are the hosts of the Earn Your Leisure podcast, where we give you the behind-the-scenes look into the world of business and finance with exclusive interviews with the people who are actually making the money. From the biggest shark on Shark Tank to the brains behind Rockefeller Records, Earn Your Leisure gives you inside access to the biggest in the game. iHeartRadio is number one for podcasts, but don't take our word for it. Find Earn Your Leisure on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcast. Presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar. You are looking live. This is the Draft Betcast, live from the v Studios inside Circa Las Vegas. Welcome to the v Draft Betcast, live from Circa. Cannot wait for this to unfold. Four hours worth. That's how long we'll be here anyway. And then all through the night with Tim Murray and JVT for the uh, nightcap and everything as wrap-up show can bring you late into the night. But so much to get into before the draft even starts, Matt. Uh, by the way, it's Gil Alexander, Matt Brown, Danielle Alvari. We'll be joined by Brent Musburger, Mike Pritchard, former first-rounder, our own Michael Lombardi. Uh, the draft about to start, obviously, with Jacksonville on the clock. But, Matt, this day, uh, more than just the draft itself, and we're going to do all the live numbers, live draft uh, available from DraftKings. It's rumor central today, and we may have a blockbuster deal on the horizon. We're sitting here right now, Gil, Pro Football Talk on their Twitter report. Packers, quote, open to the reality of trading Aaron Rodgers with Broncos' most likely partner. That on the heels of a Tom Pelissero tweet earlier in the day uh, that said that the Niners had talked to the Packers about Aaron Rodgers. Then Adam Schefter saying that Aaron Rodgers has been disgruntled with the Green Bay Packers. So the intrigue uh, just keeps rising, and uh, we shall see. We shall see. Mark Slareth saying that it's as close to a deal as can possibly get done. Yeah, I mean, this is this is something apparently that has been going on a long time, that they decided that... Basically, I guess Aaron Rodgers and his camp decided that today would be the day that they wanted to go ahead and and really put this out there. But I guess these contract negotiations have been going on for for a long time. I did hear a couple of the insiders, uh, Adam Schefter being one of them, talking about it today, where he said this really actually dates back to last year, and it goes it goes back to not only them taking a quarterback in the first round, but trading up to take a quarterback in the first round, as if to say oh, no, we are definitely going to get your replacement, Aaron Rodgers. We're going to get this guy. Trey Wingo now reporting uh, that Packers reportedly told Aaron Rodgers they were going to trade him in the offseason then backed off. It's been a bleep show between them ever since. Mm-hmm. And within the last week, Rodgers told the team, trade or no trade, I'm not coming back. Buckle up, folks, the words of Trey Wingo. Uh, our third partner, of course, here is down on the floor at Circa. She'll be updating prop grades as they come in during the draft, as they are graded, as they cash. It's our own Danielle Alvari. How you doing down there, Danielle? Hi, guys. So excited. It's really cool to get to be in a sports book for this event, especially because behind me are not just sports fans. They are sports betters. They have different things to cheer for than just a good draft pick for their team. So in for a very exciting night, Gil. How many bets do you have personally, Danielle? I, I, I knew you were going to say, you guys know I love to fire a lot of bets usually. I have none. I couldn't pull the trigger on any, which is good because wow. I can cheer for your guys' bets tonight. Okay. All right. Well, we'll keep checking back in with you all through the night. Uh, Danielle down there. Let's get Danielle some security down there, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Yeah, As the night goes on and everyone starts having a lot more fun. I'm a little, worried, a little worried about her. Um, it, it's just, I, well, first of all, let me answer the question that I just asked mm-hmm. of, of Danielle. I have now 20 draft props that I've made. Now, that may seem like a lot to some. 
Uh, but that's just kind of how, how it's worked out for me. How about you? I think I ended up with 27 or 28, <laughs> something like that. So ended up with 27 or 28. Now, these are, are, are all unique, right? There were positions that I got on early that we got on early that we thought – that this was going to be the way the draft was going to play out and or we just didn't believe some of the reports out there as to the way that the draft was going to play out as it became more apparent Gil, one of the things about being a sports better check check your ego at the door right and yeah. so uh, is one of the things i had to start oh, yeah. coming to the reality this past week you know is is okay how can i at least try to maybe not necessarily make money off of this particular bet or this particular prop or this particular spot in the draft, but I can at least give myself at least a little bit of upside and or lessen the blow a little bit. So did a little bit of that as well as we kind of moved into, you know, here we are on Thursday. Yeah, I think that's important to know what you just said. Some, so while it sounds like it's a lot of individual bets, some of those pockets just sort of counteract each right. other. Some are hedges against uh, possible losses. But the biggest betting news of all today, beyond the Aaron Rodgers story, which is not necessarily a betting one, this notion of the number three pick. And Trey Lance, all of a sudden today, becoming the betting favorite to be the number three pick in the draft. We will obviously cover that uh, as we approach pick number three, the most intrigued at that number for sure. It's Gil Alexander. It's Matt Brown. It's Danielle Alvari. This is VEASAN's Draft BetCast live from Circa. Uh, we're honored uh, to, in five minutes from now, to bring in a legend, Brent Musburger. Curious to hear what he's going to say about, well, he's the voice of the Raiders, who he believes the Raiders will take among other teams, and really just sort of get a sense from him of where he stands on number three right now. What about you? Because we have seen this. This has been kind of like the Heisman Trophy, mm-hmm. which has gone up and down. Remember, the Heisman Trophy went between four guys all year in terms of the betting market. Who was the favorite? Week to week, it changed. We thought it was Mac Jones now running away at the very end. Right. Apparently not. Apparently not. I mean, this started, I woke up this morning and checked the odds this morning, Gil. I mean, this is like something that literally some steam came in about mid-morning Pacific time where it was it was minus 300 at some books, minus 350 is high, as, as minus 350 at other books for Mac Jones to be the number three pick overall. And then you started to see it, and there was a tick, and there was another tick, and, there was another, and then there was just this massive move to where – goes all the way to minus 150 to where Trey Lance was going to be the number yeah. three pick. Now, we're trying to we're trying to connect the dots just as much as you guys are. And, you know, Gil and I are texting back and forth. We're trying to figure out what's going on with all that. Producer Kelly Bidlin was, was with us as well, trying to figure what was going on. Could this have been just based off of a, a final mock draft that got put out? Could this have come off of, I know, Pat McAfee, a guy who's got a pretty big platform out there, had, had put out that he had heard that it could be Trey Lance. Now, is this just people moving off of, uh, you know, a mock draft and a, and a rumor, or is this something maybe a little bit more that we don't know? Yeah, Todd McShay also put mm-hmm. Trey Lance at number three in his latest. That could have had something to do with it. Um, you know, the interesting thing was, Mac Jones was interviewed on the NFL Network about an hour ago. Uh, he said, I have no idea if San Francisco is picking me or not. Mm-hmm. And unless he's the best actor in the world, he was dead serious about it. So here we are now on the cusp of, and, and we're assuming, obviously, Trevor Lawrence is going number one to Jacksonville. By the way, I had a buddy who bet $75,000 to win 200 on that. I'm not making that up at minus 35000 Um, Yes, that's what some people bet. We think it's Zach Wilson at number two to the Jets, mm-hmm. but then it's, it's three. And right now, what is your gut telling you right now about this? If you know that the Niners, by the way, what is this? Does any of this make sense? Did the Packers know about Aaron Rodgers being disgruntled? Did Aaron Rodgers save this to sort of get back at Green Bay? If San Francisco was actually making a run at Aaron Rodgers, shouldn't they have done that prior to the trade? Or did they not know about this? It's all very strange. Yeah, and I started to look at it, Gil, and the thing to me that was the the strangest about this was just mainly the fact that is they don't have a lot to, to trade. They traded everything to get to three. Yeah. So like they don't have a lot to give in order to 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 get that pick, you know, to try to get Aaron Rodgers from them. That's why some of these other teams maybe that are getting mentioned, you know, a, a Broncos or whatever makes a little bit more sense to me than the 49ers because what were you going to do? You were going to give them Jimmy Garoppolo? I mean, like, if, if they're going to get rid of Aaron Rodgers, wouldn't you be turning to the guy that, again, your first-round pick that you traded up <laughs> to go get? I mean, that seems like your obvious step not to take on Jimmy Garoppolo. And so, of course, they gave up future first-round picks to get up to the three, so... It was kind of like, and they're certainly never parting with Bosa. You know, I mean, like, that's not happening. They're never doing so. It was like, okay, you can have our three, and then, uh, eh, 
talk to us in 2025 or just, something like Just that. to clarify what that trade was, again, for those who, who forget, the 49ers traded their first rounder this year, their first rounder next year, their first rounder in 2023, and a third round pick, uh, compensatory pick next year's draft to the Dolphins for number three. The Dolphins uh, later jockeyed around uh, themselves with the Eagles. Uh, that was from 12 to 3, and then the Dolphins went back to 6 with the Eagles. But it's a uh, it's an amazing sort of turn of events today because this is better than any Super Bowl. The fact that we could have Aaron Rodgers, we're supposed to be covering a draft, and we will with live betting uh, and, and grading props. But the fact that this could be overrun by Aaron Rodgers perhaps going to Denver, if you believe some of the Twitter chatter right now, it's very close to getting done. I don't know, not confirmed yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what, what of course happens at number three is Jimmy, do you believe the Jimmy Garoppolo rumors that he's already dealing with a contract issue with new England? They're already working on the details of that. Who knows? Right. And, and this could flip this draft on its, on its head really. Right. Oh. I mean, because this changes things completely. I mean, not near as much as if this had gone, you know, to three with, with, with the 49ers, of course, because then the draft just goes completely haywire. Um, as we were just assuming that it was definitely going to go quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it certainly still changes a ton. I mean, the Broncos sitting there with that pick, you would assume that that pick leaves them now, brings in. So it, it certainly changes everything that we've got. Hopefully doesn't affect our bets too much. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're in for the wild ride here. Listen, Gil, one thing I think we can all, that you and I can both as, as bettors, if we're, going, if we're going to lose some of these bets or if we're, if we're, let's hope not, come out of this thing on the losing end tonight, can there at least be utter chaos? Utter chaos. Like, that's all we're looking that's for. That's what we're rooting for. Yeah. Uh, let's bring in a gentleman who is, uh, we're just honored to have him on the show. Uh, he's one of the founders of VSIN, the Vegas Stats and Information Network. But, of course, you know him uh, from so many years, the NFL Today, ABC College Football, every sport under the sun. And, of course, these days he's the radio voice of the Las Vegas Raiders. It's the great Brent Musburger. Brent, how are you? What a night already. Hey, Gil. Oh, yeah, it is uh, absolutely awesome. I was chuckling when you guys said total chaos we're in for, perhaps. And I think that would be just wonderful. Aaron Rodgers is like a gigantic cloud hovering over this draft tonight and the rain starting to come down. Now, you and I both know he's a little bit of a diva, okay? Uh, He's a little too cool for school, but he's a great talent. But why? Why does he want to be traded? Does he want to be closer to Los Angeles where they tape Jeopardy? Can he do that on his off day? Lots of things going on. Now, San Francisco. Uh, And, uh, yes, Trey Lance, the favorite, DraftKings. Big, big move to Trey away from uh, Mac Jones. I do not think the 49ers want to trade for Rodgers, okay? That's my own personal opinion, okay? Two years ago, they knew his weakness big time, okay? Not only did they beat him in the NFC Championship game, they belittled him earlier in the season, okay? I mean, they decimated Aaron Rodgers, and they could have had him when he came out of Cal, as you know. Uh, they yeah. passed him in that first round, and they let the Packers take him. But he is the story of the night. And it is strictly stay tuned. Now, one of the things that's happened at DraftKings, they have taken win totals down, not only on the Packers, but on the teams where they think he might wind up playing quarterback this year. You cannot bet totals. I immediately, immediately went to the Packers total. And a short time ago, when it opened up, when it opened up at DraftKings, it was 10 and a half. And that just said, go bet the under immediately. Can't do it. The bookies are too smart. You know what I mean? They're just too smart for me. It's funny how they, they get the same information we do, Brent. That's uh, that's the problem with this racket. <laughs> you, wanna, you know, and this is why this is going to be, Brent, you're talking about total chaos. So here we go. Per source, there are no negotiations currently happening between the Broncos and Packers. Broncos are prepared for their selection at number nine. Could things change? Yes. Is something imminent? No. That's pro football talk. <laughs> well, there so, you go. I, I, what happened to this was definitely happening. I mean, this is <laughs> goodness gracious. If you're Teddy, uh, if great. you're Teddy Bridgewater right now, what do you think it as well? Right, just get, having been dealt to the Broncos yesterday for the small price of a sixth round pick, and you hear all this swirling, and you're like, I cannot. 
catch a break. Right. I cannot find a home. With regard to Aaron Rodgers, did you for a moment, you're the play-by-play voice for the Raiders, Brent, did you for a moment think the Raiders could be a destination? Well, it was interesting that he mentioned them. Uh, And again, uh, that's close to California and Los Angeles. There had to be a reason uh, why he threw the Raiders into the mix of teams that he would be willing to play for. I'm sure there's a there's a very strong no trade clause in his contract, uh, just as there is in Jimmy Garoppolo's with uh, San Francisco. You know, it's interesting if they do decide to choose the youngster, very inexperienced out of North Dakota State. To me. It means they have to keep Garoppolo or a veteran, okay? Because you cannot turn Trey Lance loose as your starting quarterback from day one. He's just too inexperienced for that role. So obviously, it's either Garoppolo or another veteran that they want to have. The Niners, as I recall, were 6-10 and uh, last year. And of course, Gil, you and I have talked about the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. Uh, The 49ers had a receiver wide open in the end zone. And Garoppolo missed him, okay? And I'm sure that Kyle Shanahan goes to sleep at night thinking about that play and maybe a couple of plays when he was coaching up Matt Ryan in Atlanta and they blew that big lead uh, to the New England Patriots in that particular Super Bowl. First and foremost, coaches have told me around the NFL, your quarterback has to be accurate. That's what you look for more than anything else because a turnover is so critical in this league we can blue sky all these numbers and everything you want but when you go to monday and you look if you want to lost your bets turnovers if you're turning that ball over you're probably losing your bets if you know what i mean brent it, we talk about number three obviously and this is certainly super intriguing but then you know four seems to be still a little bit up in the air as well i mean there were a lot of people who were riding off Matt Ryan, I thought he didn't play all that bad. I thought the problem was on the defensive side of the ball, to be perfectly honest. But you look in Matt Ryan, uh, apparently a lot of people want to stick a fork in him. But then you have the generational talent in Pitts as well. What do you think happens at four? And what would you do if you had four? Great, great spot. And a great question, okay? I'm saying the phone's open. Give me a call. If you like what a team is offering, I'm talking now about Atlanta, you go ahead and trade out a four. Matt Ryan can be your quarterback at least for one more year and maybe two. You do not have to draft a quarterback of the future, in my opinion. And if you don't like what you're being offered, take this generational talent they're talking about, a tight end. You know, after Trevor Lawrence, when you talk to scouts just about talent, regardless of position, okay, Kyle Pitts frequently is number two almost every scout's mind, okay? I mean, this is a youngster, 6'6 six, six plus. Uh, he's got great speed. You know, the tight, end, the tight end position, and I've seen it with Waller with the Raiders, is really changing. You know, the Mike Ditka, my hero, he used to line up tight, man, and he used to go after Nitschke, and he used to go after linebackers, and he'd catch passes in the middle of the field. Now, you move tight ends all over the field. You slot them. Sometimes they're out wide, and Pitts can do all of this, okay? And he also is not a bad blocker. So he could be an automatic plus for Atlanta if they don't like what they're on. I think think the Falcons are sitting in the catbird seat, to tell you the truth, because they've got their quarterback in place for next year. And now they can either get an abundance of picks in exchange for whatever player the other team might want, or they can just select Mr. Pitts and go on about their business. It would give them another weapon in the NFC South. So I think it's a question of the night other than San Francisco. Once we clear San Francisco and we get this off the books, okay, there's so many great things to talk about in this particular draft. This is going to be some night in the NFL, guys. Listen to me about this. This is going to be just a wonderful night, and we're going to have some trades that we're not expecting. You just We always do, and uh, and we just wait and see. It is going to be fascinating. Even beyond three, like you said, uh, you, you think about Waller and Kittle, and Kelsey, the elite tight ends in the National Football League. They were all fifth-round picks, and now we're talking about someone going in the fourth you know, fourth pick overall, which would be unbelievable. Uh, the Raiders are at 17, Brent. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about them specifically. Right, exactly. Uh, you know, whatever the line coach, Cable, and he's done a good job with the offensive line. He has to rebuild the right side of it, okay, uh, from center Hudson on over through Trent Brown. If they think Brandon Parker can hold up there, 
then they can go to the defensive side of the ball, Gil, and they can take. Now, they might be overdrafting Morig, but there are not a lot of safeties. He's out of TCU, so they certainly could go there. You never fail if you draft a defensive rushman. That's the most important part of your defense over there. Or if there's a corner that they think they can add, they can go in that particular direction. But I think it all depends on whether or not they're satisfied with Brandon Parker at right tackle, because this is a good group of tackles. And what that means is, yes, you can get an elite probably at 17, but you might get a very good one in the second round, okay? So you can go to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, the Raiders haven't drafted – well, last year they did not draft well at all. Let's, let's be perfectly honest, okay? Uh, Damon Arnett was a, was a disappointment at corner. Uh, he probably should have gone later in that particular draft. Uh, so, so we shall see what they decide. The other thing is they could also trade out and just get additional picks because they need bodies on defense. There's no doubt about that, Gil. Brent Musburger, everybody, uh, founder of VEASAN, and of course, a cultural icon for all of us who uh, have all followed sports since we were little kids. Thank you, Brent. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Gil. Talk to you later. Enjoy the draft. Brent Musburger on the show. Uh, DraftKings has their live numbers up. I just got, uh, did you get chills whenever uh, you pulled it up? I know. It's a beautiful thing. I but got now, chills. Now, we should point out the Jacksonville Jaguars are on the clock for the number one pick in the draft. Apparently, they want to use the entire clock. Don't ask us why. And so what DraftKings is doing is they've got them up about four picks in advance. Is that what I'm seeing here? It's looking like about four picks in advance. So right now you could pick, you know, pick five. You could pick pick six, pick seven. Uh, You could even pick the position. Guys, this is not even just like basic stuff. You can pick offense or defensive player. You can pick the, the position of the player to come. So we'll see what offerings continue to get listed here. But, I mean, it's pretty great. I mean, if you look right now, Gil, like we're, if you didn't happen to get in, right? I mean, right. you know, as we sit right now, at least anyway, that the that the Bengals are sitting there at five, that the Dolphins are sitting there at six. If you're convinced the Dolphins are going to take a wide receiver come hell or high water, no matter what, it's minus 150 right now if you want it. Right. Of course, the, the one caveat, the one sort of thing that could t- torpedo all of that is if there are trades. Trades, right, right. And then the team you think is picking at five or six may be completely different, and their needs, obviously, uh, will be different as well. Um, should be fascinating, man. So we'll see if the Jaguars, Jaguars with 445 left on their clock. And I don't know why they need the whole clock. But it looks like uh, they will have their pick by the time we get back. They're soaking it in. Yeah. There, this is a, there's a moment for this squad. And then, uh, and then the New York Jets will be on the clock uh, right after that. It is the 2021 NFL Draft, the VEASAN Draftcast, live from Circa. Gil Alexander, Matt Brown, we'll have Michael Labardi, Mike Pritchard, Danielle Alvari with us. Come on back. Good afternoon. Would you like to try a free sample of our double fudge brownie? Oh, sure. Mmm, that's very good. I'll just take one more, just to be sure. Yep, still very good. Some things never change, like never being able to take just one free sample. And Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Mmm, is that macadamia nut I taste? Let me take one more. Sir, mmm, yeah. I thought so. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. It's crazy how much we have to pay for outdated, impersonal health care. And even crazier that we all just accept it. It's time to face facts. Health care is backwards. Luckily, there's Forward, a new approach to primary care that's surprisingly personal and refreshingly straightforward. Forward never makes you feel like just another patient. Backed by top-rated doctors and the latest tech, Forward gives you access to personalized care whenever you need it. Using in-depth genetic analysis and real-time blood work, Forward's top-rated doctors provide you with in-depth insights to better understand your genetics, mental, and physical health. They then create custom, easy-to-understand plans to help guide you to achieving long-term health. With Forward, you get unlimited in-person visits with your doctor and access to care anytime via the Forward app, all for one flat monthly fee. It's time to stop accepting backwards health care and start moving your health forward. Visit GoForward.com today to learn more. That's GoForward.com. Welcome back into VEASAN's Draft BetCast. Still down here in the sportsbook right now, Danielle Alvari. And we have the first pick in. Gil, Matt, who do you think it's going to be? <laughs> no clue. <laughs> for my buddy. We were talking about this on. We were talking about this during the break. We are like, I wonder who this could be. Yes. For my buddy's sake, who bet 75000 to make two hundred. I sure hope it's Trevor Lawrence uh, for his sake. Uh, Roger Goodell about to make that selection. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, by the way, on the heels of of another thing that was mentioned today, that Tim Tebow wants to get back into the league. 
uh, and a report that he just uh, he and uh, Urban Meyer bought houses close together. Obviously, people immediately go to maybe Tim Tebow ends up with Jacksonville as a tight end, by the way. And uh, it is official. So there you go. There it Everyone is. Everyone can breathe easy. Oh, congratulations on your two hundred dollars, buddy. Look, here's one of those. It's one of those situations. Go. We were talking about this. I mean, it is. It was. If you're this franchise and if you're the Jaguars, you got to feel pretty good about where you're at right now, right? I mean, at least it's a fresh start. Like, yeah. you got new coach, new quarterback. You got another pick later on as well. You can maybe get him a weapon from that standpoint. I mean, you got to feel pretty good about them. And listen, this is a division that a little shaky right now. Could definitely could be had, not necessarily this year, obviously, but, you know, get a year under these guys' belts, get the Urban Meyer year to kind of get his stuff together over there and get his system in place. It could be it could be very interesting. But, again, uh, minus 10,000 on this one, too, uh, yeah. if, if you wanted. To, I don't think there's a lot of people out there who were, uh, who were betting. Them. Yeah, that's one in the quarterback category, though, for yeah. those betting the quarterback prop. Obviously, you counted on Trevor Lawrence going number one. Trevor Lawrence, 90 touchdowns, 70 picks in 40 games, 36 starts uh, during his time at Clemson. 2020 Heisman runner-up, 34-2 and two straight up uh, in those 36 uh, starts. Over 3,000 passing yards uh, last year, 24 touchdowns against five picks, eight rushing touchdowns as well. If there's anything underrated about Trevor Lawrence, it's his ability to use his legs. He's the one guy that in all this run-up to the draft, we rarely talked about, right? Because it was already fait accompli that he was going mm-hmm. to the Jaguars. Does uh, You're an LSU guy. So you saw this firsthand a couple years ago. The two losses, we know where those losses were. They were on the biggest stage of them all. He wasn't great. Does that give you any concern at all? I don't try to, I mean, a little bit, obviously, but I don't try to be a quarterback evaluator, right? Like, I don't try to be a talent evaluator. I listen to these guys that do, do it all the time and know better than me. And so, I mean, if they tell me, that this guy has every single tool of, I mean, you know, when you when you start comparing a guy to Andrew Luck, that is, you know, the surest prospect since Andrew Luck. We know that Andrew Luck did pan out. He he was every bit the guy that people thought, you know, whenever they hyped him up as much as they did. So I, I kind of look at this and say, if that's what you're telling me, guys, I, I believe it. Yeah. Mel Kuyper has him as his fourth greatest prospect of all time at quarterback. I mean, he's been doing it quite a while. How about that? Yeah. John John Elway being number one, by the way. Uh, The New York Jets now on the clock. And uh, all indications are that they will go with a BYU standout quarterback, Zach Wilson. It's after that where it gets pretty funky. Yeah, this this had gotten up to, they pulled the number one pick, Gil. You know, we were talking about this. They pulled the number one pick about a half an hour for the only thing they left up was the number two pick. If you wanted Zach Wilson, you could also lay that minus 10,000 if you wanted to. So 10 grand to 100. I don't think a lot of people's bankrolls are uh, are oh, are sufficient enough to do that. So, with like I said, draft really begins at pick number three. Is there any bit of doubt about Zach Wilson going to the Jets? You know, the funny thing is, is the one thing we didn't get, we didn't get the Jets just coming out all the time and saying like, we can't wait to get our guy. They really like, haven't mentioned it no, at like, all. Like we can't yeah. wait to get our guy. We yeah. can't wait to start the the Wilson era here and all that. Like it was always just assumed and there's a lot of people who are in the know who just again were saying that that was going to be the case but definitely not one of those things where they were taking out billboards or anything no for sure and uh what a cultural uh what a culture shock from uh, utah to new york city this would be for zach wilson as the jets decide this offseason they're done with sam darnold they trade him to carolina uh so that obviously was there more than to tell that they were going to draft a quarterback and it was very clear Uh, some weeks ago that it was, in fact, going to be Zach Wilson from BYU. So if you're the Jets, again, we often talk about how, you know, who teams are going to draft, what their needs are. We rarely talk about how they got here. Remember, the Jets won in Week 16. They beat the Rams. A lot of us who had the Rams and Survivor that week, remember that? That was Week 15, Mm -hmm. pardon me. And then Week 16, they went ahead and they beat the Browns. And that's why they're poised to draft Zach Wilson and not Trevor Lawrence, who the Jaguars just got generational talent, apparently, uh, according to many, moments ago. We will do that. Pick number two. We'll update the live odds. It's VEASAN and the 2021 Draft BetCast live from Circa. This is Steven Jackson, co-host of the podcast All the Smoke, a production of the Black Effect and iHeartMedia in partnership with Showtime. Each week, my brother Matt Barnes and I Two NBA champions sit down with the biggest names in sports and culture to have uncut and raw conversations. No BS questions, no BS answers. We get right to it with each and every guest. So join Matt and I every week for All the Smoke to hear interviews you won't get anywhere else. Subscribe on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
The Death and Life of Kobe Bryant is a limited series podcast that looks back at the investigation of the crash a year ago that killed the basketball superstar, his daughter, and seven others. LA County Fire, 83. Uh, helicopter crashed into a mountain. Uh, we heard it, and now I'm looking at the flames. The Death and Life of Kobe Bryant takes a different look at one of the biggest tragedies of 2020. NBA star Kobe Bryant was on board that helicopter. Kobe Bryant died earlier this afternoon in Los Angeles in a helicopter crash. News reports are just coming in. The death and life of Kobe Bryant includes exclusive content and a look at the legacy number 24 leaves behind. He never wanted to rest on the laurels of, hey, I'm just a sports star. Anything that he was going to put his name to, anything he was going to help with, he and Vanessa were going to give it their all. Listen to the death and life of Kobe Bryant on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The Kentucky Derby is Saturday evening, and the VEASAN horse racing experts are analyzing the horses, jockeys, track conditions, starting positions, and prior race results to find the betting edge. Whether you play the horses every week or search the terms exacta and trifecta once a year during the Triple Crown, our team is here to get you ready to make your best bet on the run for the roses. Visit VEASAN.com slash horses to find our full race coverage, special offers from our partners, and picks from horse racing specialists, including Dave Tooley, Ron Flatter, Jeff Siegel, and Jeremy Plonk on that VEASAN com slash horses. Welcome back into VEASAN's draft bet cast. Gil, Matt, Zach Wilson is officially a Jet. He is. Uh, three, Time to get weird, Gil. Time. Let's that, get weird in here. That was when it actually <laughs> starts. Uh, Zach Wilson is, in fact, a, a New York Jet. 33 touchdowns against three picks last year. Uh, 11 yards per attempt, 12.6 air yards per attempt. I mean, the stats are gaudy. But he couldn't go into Coastal Carolina and beat them. That's obviously the concern. Is the level of competition um, noteworthy enough or, or reflective mm-hmm. of what he can do at the higher level? Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of guys, again, who who scout this a lot more than we do, who basically said the only quarterback that they had a ton of conviction is in was Trevor Lawrence. And then past that, everybody was a little bit of a question mark past that. And so... Um, we shall see with Zach Wilson, but I'll have you know, Gil, uh, in the mock the mock draft that I did in my head, I'm two for two. I'm perfect two for two right now. <laughs> good feeling for good, you. Yeah, feeling good about it. Yes. And two quarterbacks. Again, the uh, first round uh, prop with quarterbacks. Back early on in the prop season for draft uh, props, it was four and a half. That was an easy over, but it's been five and a half for most of this run up to the 2021 NFL draft. Uh, and the question is not, will five be drafted? The question is, will six? And I, I said on the morning show today on the radio side, I think Tampa Bay with the final pick in the first round. I know you have a significant position on under five and a half. I worry about number 32 with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We'll see. We will see. Yeah, we, uh, that'll be George, the ultimate sweat. Tonight. George Kittle just just tweeted the little the two little googly eyes. Oh, boy. Is this great five minutes yeah. left, left on the clock for the Niners at number three? They are on the clock. And this is really where the intrigue begins. And so I ask you, we've been this is what we have spent mm-hmm. most of our time, not just us, but everybody talking about. This is the moment in the draft from which all follows. Uh, right now, what does your gut tell you? As Trey Lance became again today and just today, the favorite to be drafted number three. If I had a little bit more to go with why he did, then maybe I could get there. But it just know. seems to me, yeah, it yeah. seems to me if if everybody that has any sort of intel said it's Mac Jones outside of, again, outside of a mock draft coming out today and a rumor from, from a radio host, uh, I guess I just have to go with Mac Jones. I don't get it, right? right? But, I mean, I'm just going with what I think actually happened. This is so fabulous. By the way, uh, DraftKings is doing live. They're doing it about four picks mm-hmm. in advance. And we wanted to make a point because – Right before Zach Wilson was drafted, so that was two, and obviously then four forward, they were showing positions to be drafted at number six. And even if you haven't draft, haven't made any draft props pre-flop, such opportunities, right? Because if you really believe what the Dolphins were doing there, what could they get? Yeah, I mean, you get this is literally not that far off of where we were before the drafts. Right now, we knew where one and two were going to go, but still, you're able to gain information before you're making these picks. And, and you could have picked wide receiver for the Dolphins at minus 150, where it was this was going off at like minus 131, minus 140 before, before the draft. So you're actually gaining additional information and getting nearly the same line 
that you were getting, you know, somewhere along the way with this. And so, again, it, you know, this is something just to monitor, especially as we continue to go further on into this draft guild. This is something we'll try to highlight if we have any inclination as to what may or may not happen should things stand pat. Uh, you know, we're always, we're always could be victim to trades here, but yep. that's just the way that it is. Hey, we're gambling, right? We're gambling on this stuff. That's why they call it mm-hmm. gambling. Uh, it, uh, yeah, it, minus 150 on the Dolphins to draft a wide receiver at six. By the way, let me be clear, not the Dolphins to draft a wide receiver, but whoever picks at number six mm-hmm. to draft a wide receiver. So if you believe the Dolphins stay there, that's one thing. If, if there's a trade, obviously uh, that would not go well for you, perhaps for that pick unless someone else mm-hmm. was trading up for a wide receiver. Uh th- this is this is the moment. I mean if if you're the Niners and we sort of talked about let's just for, for those of us for those of you who don't know Matt and I host uh, along with Danielle Alvari and along with Kelly Bidlin we hold we host Vicen's Primetime Action. And when the trade happened between the Niners and the Dolphins with the Niners trading that haul of three first round picks plus to uh, the Dolphins, the Niners trading that to the Dolphins to get to number three. Our immediate reaction on primetime action was, there's no way they're trading up (laughs) to draft Mac Jones at three. It's either Lance or Justin Fields. And then, of course, um, the next morning, we saw that most folks in mainstream media, including Adam Schefter, Matt Mayoko from, um, from the Bay Area, also our own Michael Lombardi, all sort of said, oh, it's definitely Mac Jones. And then we saw it go back and forth and mm-hmm. back and forth. And here we are right on the cusp of this, less than cusp of this, less than two minutes left before the Niners have to put their pick in. Um, we still don't know. We still don't know. And, and Gil, the one of the things I think that we should point out is we were we were also against that mainly because of what they had to give up to get to three. Not necessarily they were moving up to three to get Mac Jones. If they were, were sold on Mac Jones, yeah. going up and making sure that you could get him by going up to three is one thing. But to give away all of the picks in the future that they did as well was one of the reasons why we're like, man, that just seems like a lot for a guy that most people, if you remember when the line opened, it was 15 and a half on Mac Jones. Yes, yes. 15 and a half. That went from 15 and a half to nine and a half whenever there was a little bit of more rumblings about how well he did. It goes to nine and a half, which is where you had it and have it actually as, as we speak right now. And then it moves all the way to three and a half. And so... This is a guy that that's why we were saying like, man, it just seems like if, if this was the guy you wanted, you didn't have to go all the way to three or certainly didn't have to mortgage all this future to get him at three. But, you know, may, they, they are football guys, Gills, and we are not. Yeah. You know? Well, and that's the thing. And we should be clear. We, we don't feel comfortable mm-hmm. talking about talent evaluation. Right. We just want to comment on the game of the draft. And th- that's where our bets emanate from. And by the way, just because we th- we thought that the Niners weren't going to make that trade to draft Mac Jones, that doesn't mean we don't like Mac Jones, right? Like, it, it has nothing to do with a, an assessment of Mac Jones. It's just how we feel the draft would go. It's, 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 it is not Mac Jones. <laughs> the pick is in, and it is not Mac Jones. <laughs> it is not is that right? Mac Jones. It is Trey Lance. Is yeah. that official? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Wow. It is Trey Lance. And so our initial instinct is correct. Where are you getting that from? This is, I mean, it, it, it has happened. Yeah, this is apparently because we we don't have the audio here. We don't and, have the audio, yeah. but we're watching. But we don't see it on the screen yet either. But that is the deal, apparently. And uh, Roger Goodell is making his way to the podium right now to make this announcement. And if that is the case, Matt, our initial instincts have been corroborated yeah, from Albert, the Yeah, Albert Breer, Matt Miyoko. There it the, is. All of them. All Some of, them of the say, people who initially yeah. said it was going to be Mac Jones. Mm-hmm. Uh, the San Francisco 49ers, with the number three pick, have selected Trey Lance from North Dakota State, and the Niners fans at the draft in Cleveland are going wild. That fan base wanted nothing to do with Mac Jones, generally speaking. We're coming back right here on VEASAN's DraftCast. The night has just begun. Welcome back to VEASAN's Draft BetCast live from Circa. It's Gil Alexander, Matt Brown, Danielle Alvari alongside. Um, what a moment right there. No surprise with one and two. Trevor Lawrence to Jacksonville, Zach Wilson to the Jets. And then, ladies and gentlemen, Trey Lance is the pick for the San Francisco 49ers at number three, the quarterback out of North Dakota State. Um, and that just is- joining us, we were talking about this, Gil. Like, this was... This was minus 300 to minus 350, depending on the book, to Mac Jones this morning when we woke up. And then it all flipped. And then it all flipped, gets gets down to minus 150 for Trey Lance to go in this spot. 
I don't know who knew so I don't know who Somebody knew what. Somebody knew yeah. something. Yeah. I don't know who knew what and yep. where something got leaked or something. But like you, we talked about this a little bit on air. But you know, the 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 smoke didn't really start until about 24 hours for Baker Mayfield. Remember, like it was kind of like, That's is right. he really? Is it? Is this really going to happen? Baker's really going to go, and then it mm-hmm. ended up happening. And then we see this one. Not even 24 hours. We are talking hours before the draft. It comes somehow leaks out. Somehow gets out. Massive, massive, massive movement. And here we go. Trey Lance ends up at minus 150 and ends up as the guy that goes as the third pick. Our initial instincts were correct. Yes. No matter how many times people told us, no, it's Mac Jones. We said from the beginning, he said, doesn't make it. The last person we thought it was going to be mm-hmm. was Mac Jones. Let's bring in the host of the Lombardi line at VEASAN. Uh, his the name of his podcast is Gridiron Genius. He also wrote the book, oh, pardon me, uh, GM Shuffle. The name of the book is Gridiron Genius. Uh, he works at The Athletic as well. It's M Lombardi NFL on Twitter. It's our own Michael Lombardi. How you doing, Michael? Oh, you know, I'm doing good, Gil. I'm just a little surprised by this. I, I was told all along it was going to be Mac, but, you know, those things happen. I guess they, they kind of thought it was the better way to go. You know, we shall see. I think the best thing we give, I kept telling everybody, is play both. The odds were in your favor. You know, everybody was talking about Justin Fields being third, but I think the odds were in your favor if you took both and you'll make money. Let me, let me ask you this, and I asked you some version of this last night on Primetime Action, Michael. Last year, you were given some intel from Miami, and, and you're right, it wasn't just you who got it. Um, and you stated last night you felt like they lied to everybody. Um, after this experience now, do you feel like you just sort of want to shy away from, from draft intel like this? Not really, no. I think it was, you know, I don't know what actually happened. I kept saying there was an internal debate 